I'm Donald Trump Jr. I'm the son of the President of the United States. He's one of the most unethical humans in political history. Criminal conduct, prostitution, human trafficking rings, threats of extortion, business meetings, Russia collusion, public service, cocaine. The corruption extends beyond ethical concerns. It's potentially criminal. My father was threatening to withhold U.S. aid to Ukraine by effectively blackmailing the Ukrainian government with taxpayer money. My father leveraged his political power to sell out the United States of America to our enemies and enrich himself cocaine. Do you know who was bought and paid for by the Kremlin? The President of the United States, who also happened to be one of Vladimir Putin's closest associates. The dark and complex interlacings of corruption within the family has now been exposed. The West is facing an unprecedented threat to its hegemony as more agile, innovative and cohesive non-Western powers are growing by leaps and bounds to the point of making a transition to a global non-Western hegemony for the first time in history. During the last five centuries, the baton had passed from one European power to the next and ultimately to the United States. Should the United States falter under the double weight of its global imperial overstretch and domestic oligarchy plundering even its own society, there will not be another Western state there to pick up where it left off. The European Union, once touted as the likely successor or possible candidate for US-EU co-hegemony, is showing few signs of consolidating into a federation. Thus, America's decline would, in all likelihood, lead to the People's Republic of China becoming the global hegemonic power. Russia certainly has problems with oligarchy as well, but at least there the oligarchs are essentially treated as a necessary evil of capitalist economy and kept in check by the national security wing of the Russian state that is directly answerable to the president. Likewise, China's billionaires are kept at arm's length from political power, lest they use it. In the West, on the other hand, the oligarchs run the show and the national security state is kept under close ideological surveillance to ensure that it will come to the defense of the oligarchy against all enemies, foreign and domestic. U.S. service academies, which admit on the basis of recommendations by elected U.S. officials, who themselves are creatures of special interests and big money, are an example of that ideological oversight. And ultimately, the U.S. political system's apparent inability to reform itself, to make itself more fair and meritocratic, means that it is bound to lose the great power competition to those who are simply marginally less corrupt. But that simply won't do, which means the more effective competitors have to be brought down by other means, up to and including open warfare, for which the United States is actually preparing. Hi folks, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. This is going to be one of those days that we're dealing with a very sad subject. And before I feel the cold shoulder, I thought a better dress for it. Often we like to make sure that we are well prepared for what we do. But is it really that hard to talk about restorative justice part two? Show your true colors and your support. If you're a Jew, a Muslim, Christian, an evangelical, or just a politician, 
You need to hear this, folks. I urge you. Change can be a very scary concept, but we have all what we had to endure for the past six months in 2020. And though it can be overwhelming, it is best to accept the change and make the best out of it. See, my awakening and quest for truth began when I learned more about the court proceedings between 1997 and 2015 in the Canadian court system. Before I'd gone to school, learned about the law, studied the law, went to university to uh, started off actually in university with courses when we had a chance to go to Canada. So it took a while before I picked it up again from I think it was 2000 June, June. I'm not sure about that. I believe it was 1981 when I was at the university and studied with the insurance law and then we had an opportunity to go direct immediately and we had to sell everything to go to Canada because we only had a certain uh, time period that we could go otherwise we would lose our permit so I dropped everything and we moved to Canada and in Canada in 1990s I started again with law and continued and from there we actually gotten to the point that the judge told us we should receive an honorary law degree. I'm sure they know where I live, but they forgot to send it. During this time, actually, I started or it started with a unique understanding of the law contrary to the teachings at the university as I descended into the rabbit hole. You might wonder what I found in that rabbit hole. You wonder what is it with a long hauler syndrome? We hear more and more about the COVID long hauler syndrome. It's a lingering, lingering symptom of COVID-19 in the ever evolving story of coronavirus. Along comes another plot twisted. People experimenting and experiencing, they're experiencing symptoms of this illness for many, many weeks or even months after having it. A Cleveland Clinic uh, is a non-profit academic medical center and they concluded this. Although I did speak with some friends that had the COVID in early uh, 2020, April 23rd, I believe his mom passed away. She was a bit, he was himself in his 60s, 68, I believe, and his wife as well. And they all contracted it. Although with the use, and here it comes, as a biohacker that takes control over his spiritual and his We've physical body, used they used a product that will help, and that did help them to recuperate a lot faster. I'm not saying it did cure them, but he told me he was over it in a very short time. Not as short and not as expensive as Mr. Trump, who flew in a helicopter, got a $100,000 treatment, and a week later he was home if you want to believe that. Today, I wanted to continue talking about the ADD. We had it, we talked about it, ADD and ORD. What is the difference? Well, physically, there is a difference since one comes at birth. ADD is a brain disorder that affects how you pay attention, whether you sit still and how you control your behavior. And like all mental disorders, attention deficit or hyperactivity disorder results from a combination of genetic and environmental risk factors. Several studies have shown that a small molecule responsible for communication between neurons, dopamine, plays an important role in attention, task orientation and action. Now, contrary to ORD, often it has the same result as ADD, but often comes through the manipulation of PMS, not to confuse for the standard that we know PMS as a women's disease or that the monthly period. The P stands for politics, the M stands for money, and the S stands for spirituality or religion. The <coughs> restorative justice is the source of all life. I notice a seemingly never-ending parallel network. As I said before, I notice a seemingly never-ending parallel network and intersecting tunnels with the truth 
were damaged and false reality put together. It was not just a case of nuanced perceptions, you know, the little details, but utter lies and distortion of truth. So let's go back to the basics. Evangelical writer William E. Blackstone organized the first Zionist lobbying effect in 1891. He recruited J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, Charles B. Scribner, and other financiers to underwrite a massive new paper campaign for establishing a Jewish state in Palestine. Today, the preachings of hoodwinked but media-supported evangelical Christian Zionists have convinced Christian community support and linked combatants contrary to the peace, the Prince of Peace. You might also call it joint lips. You know, joint lips is when your lips are stapled together and you won't be able to move much. Does it matter if you're Jewish, an evangelical Christian, or a non-believer, you're still a prodigal son or a daughter? The answer is no. And that is the sneaky problem. It started with the publication of Schofield's A Reference Bible. Cyrus Schofield, known as a forger, felon, and a trained lawyer, hired by the Rothschilds to write this dispensational reinterpretation of biblical events and Christian doctrines. As he expanded on the writing and promotion of Schofield Reference Bible, was a massive effort to undermine true Christianity Zionist interest instead. So cunning but bogus reinterpretation of the Bible, the evangelical Christian community came to unquestionable support the Israel state and perpetuate the war in the Middle East rather than the teachings of Jeshua, the Prince of Peace. So if we expand on the writing and promotion of Schofield's reference Bible, there was a massive effort to undermine true Christianity, to serve Zionist interests instead. Isn't that a shame? We have put our belief in the trustworthiness of the Bible. I have a Schofield Bible for at least 30 years. Always enjoyed reading it, till I started to discover. Throughout the 20th century, and with incredible support from the Rothschild-controlled Oxford Press, various editions of Scoville's Bible would create a new religion, Christian Zionism, Judeo-Christianity, altering words and meanings through deceptive footnotes. We are dealing with restorative justice, with the source of all life. Trump, occultism, and the Kabbalistic roots of evangelical Christianity. Most Jews are Khazarian, a mix of Europeans and Turks, perhaps 95% according to John Hopkins' Jewish genome. None of it this is necessary or should be. And we all know better. I, don't, I do not tell people what they want to hear. I inform you what is going on. So again, folks, I don't tell you what you want to hear, but it is important to at least know what is going on. So if liberty means anything, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. Now, there was another fellow that used to say that, and that was George Orwell. Remember that, 1986? Though a confused look today is just enough to demonstrate that the mess we are in with Trump at the center is a real occultist conspiracy, just much older than some know and expect. We see restorative justice with the source of all life goes back several centuries. So we take a turn of the clock and we go back to around the time of Jesua Hamasia, also known by many as Jesus. So turning the clock several centuries and today's conspiritualists claim to rediscover. Today we can see what it is, childish disinformation to keep the public away from what they figured out long ago. We're talking 2000 years ago, folks. Most do not know the real players either, or why evangelical Christians are such peculiar people. You will realize why they battle hated, wealthy and corrupted leaders. 
both political and religious, and why they are so foolish. Now, before you get very upset, remember, I was brought up in a Christian environment. I went to a Bible school. I went to a seminary. I went to a practical Bible school. I served as an evangelist for 12 years in a maximum security in the Netherlands. And I tell you, my friend, I really ate it up. But many, 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 many things were question marks. And so I continued wondering and asking why. The difference about evangelical Christianity is its occultist side. The one not shown the rank and file worshipers. So if you are just a person that comes and visits the church, praise the Lord and hallelujah, wonderful. You, will don't, you don't notice it, but I worked within the organizations. I was part of it. And each time if there was a certain conflict that didn't make sense, and I asked why. In the beginning, I was only six years old when my mom died and they, I was told, yeah, God looks from heaven and she's now with God. And I got mad. The second time I was around 13, 14, uh, 17 actually. 1967 when I discovered certain things in the Bible and I asked the, the pastor how come that this and this and this is happening and they kicked me out because I was not allowed to ask that I was supposed to celebrate the Sabbath and of course Shalom Shabbat is an awesome understanding however to kick someone out of a church and tell them that they will not get into heaven when they have the little piece of paper that says which religion it ought to be, there's something wrong, folks. There's something that is lacking. So now I ask myself the question, what is the difference with evangelical Christianity today? And are we occultists? How come that we have so many weird things that we are allowing in our situation? And how come that so much of the belief is the same like the Kabbalistic Jews in Poland around Frankfurt had? This is who the Trump, or Trump family, his name was D-R-U-M-P-F, and he changed it into Trump family is, and why this is so important. Evangelicals and Kabbalistic beliefs exalt evil over good, leaving doors open for messiahs like Trump. Yeshua of the Gospels is pushed aside mainly for occultist prophecies. Yeshua's teachings have obliterated doctrines that stress sexual self-indulgence, ritual child sexual abuse, and the glorification of wealth. Money, money, money seems to be the rule. Today's evangelical occupations satanics, money, and trappings, and worship the Frankets family sons like Bush, Trump, Romney, all wealth and power, all gained through occultism, something too easy to prove. And talking about Moloch, Baal, Baal, B-A-A-L, and the other occult divine being behind evangelical Christianity, Freemasonry, Freemasons, and even sect within Judaism, and others, we talk about jinns and demons for our history is decontaminated, folks. In other words, it goes back to many religions. And we're going back 2,000 years and longer. We're living in a world ruled by the occultist beliefs that drove Nazism across Europe to the United States, brought from Europe in 1830s to support what is now Christian evangelical, uh, evangelicals. Freemasonry, always satanic, became a social organization. The many messiahs of the Jews disappeared and the schisms of that religion and the Kabbalist Christians will peddle fake messiahs like Trump himself. We will dispense of a few historical tools today. We will also present hard questions about satanic rules, rituals, pedophilia, about Maxwell slash Murdoch, the Trump, Trumps and their history and why they are sacrificed a quarter of a million Americans to Moloch's name of 17th century occultism. Folks, we are in for a big hard ride.